Russia and the United Arab Emirates offered diplomatic support to Telegram founder Pavel Durov after his arrest in France, but he decided not to accept the offer, Politico reported, citing sources. Both Russia and the United Arab Emirates offered Durov diplomatic assistance, which he declined, the publication notes. Telegram is literally clinging to the popular saying which goes, desperate times call for desperate measures. This follows after the messaging app recently got embroiled in a scandal following the arrest of its founder Pavel Durov in France last month, according to Cohen Speaker Media Outlet. With this policy change, Telegram users may now flag content in their private chats that they deem inappropriate or illegal. The flagged content will then be reviewed by moderators. This update, without a doubt, marks a major deviation from Telegram's previous policy that did not give room for moderating private chats. Durov was detained at Le Bourget Airport on August 24. On August 28, his preliminary custody was over. The entrepreneur was delivered to a court, where the prosecutor charged Durov with six offenses, which include complicity in the administration of an online platform that enabled illegal transactions, committed within a criminal group. The offense, according to a statement from the Paris prosecutor's office, is punishable by up to 10 years in prison and a fine of 500, 000 euros. By decision of an investigating judge, the entrepreneur went under judicial supervision with an obligation to post bail of 5 million euros. He also has to appear twice a week at a police station and is forbidden to leave France. Former British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has stated that under certain circumstances, he could lead a foreign legion in Ukraine. The politician made the corresponding admission in a telephone conversation with Russian pranksters Vovan and Lexus, who introduced themselves as Ukrainian officials. According to him, the lack of military leadership talent is currently preventing him from doing so, but the desire is there. I am as ardent a supporter of Ukraine as you can imagine. And I often wish I was gifted in the military so that I could go and lead a foreign legion in Ukraine if I were a general," Johnson said. He added that he considers peace talks between Moscow and Kyiv possible, but only after Russia's defeat. I'm afraid the precondition has to be the defeat of Russia and the Ukrainians have to have some sense of victory because that's the only way I think they'll be able to negotiate anything," the former Prime Minister of Great Britain emphasised. Speaking about the degree of the West's involvement in the Russian-Ukraine confrontation, he noted that the United States and its allies are full participants in the conflict. I am sad to say this, I think we are already involved. We support the Ukrainians. But the reality is, and this is a terrible tragedy, but the Ukrainians are fighting for us. And I think that the minute we publicly introduce our forces, our own troops, into their territory, it will become a different category, a completely different category of conflict. The consequences are not easy to predict. Boris Johnson admitted. Let us recall that after the start of the military operation of the Russian Federation in Ukraine, the Kiev was ready to negotiate with Moscow and even signed a corresponding document. After that, the Russian Federation withdrew its troops from Kiev. These negotiations, held predominantly in Istanbul, have become a focus for critics of the war in the US, who often argue that the West, and particularly then British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, sabotaged these negotiations and prevented a successful ceasefire. Vladimir Putin would go on to make a similar argument in his now infamous interview with Tucker Carlson. It is noted that after Boris Johnson arrived in the Ukrainian capital, Zelensky and his team refused to comply with the terms of the agreement and declared their intention to inflict a strategic defeat on Moscow. The American press notes that the head of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, having initiated the invasion of the Ukrainian armed forces into the Kursk region, is actually going for broke, trying to provoke the start of a nuclear conflict against the backdrop of his existential defeat in the armed conflict with Russia. As the Wall Street Journal writes, by invading the Russian region, Ukraine has violated one of the greatest taboos of the atomic age. This is the first in the world stories an instance where a non-nuclear country invades and occupies part of a nuclear power's territory. 
At the same time, according to the authors of the article, it remains unclear what further steps the administration of US President Joe Biden and other Western allies of Kyiv will take whether they will prevent Zelensky from continuing to follow a course that could well lead to a nuclear war, or hoping that Moscow will not use nuclear weapons, they will use weapons against the Ukrainian armed forces. On the contrary, they will increase support for Ukrainian attacks on Russian territory. The article published in the American newspaper suggests that the West as a whole is still under the illusion that Putin is ready to negotiate peace on any terms, including those that include Ukraine's possible entry into NATO and the EU. The authors of the article believe that the administration of the lame duck Biden is no longer able to influence the decisions of Zelensky, who rejects Washington's advice. The next US president will most likely be forced to develop a new policy in the context of the escalation of the Ukrainian crisis, which Biden was unable to prevent. Russia is amending its doctrine on the use of nuclear weapons as a response to perceived Western involvement in the Ukrainian war, its deputy foreign minister Sergei Ryabkov was quoted as saying. The comments came at a time when Russia is battling an incursion into its Kursk region by Ukrainian troops and amid growing attacks on Russian territory by Kyiv using Western weapons. Ryabkov said the decision to change the nuclear doctrine is connected with the escalation course of our Western adversaries. In late August, Ukraine confirmed it had used weapons supplied by the United States in its Kursk incursion.